Today, we're looking at the Flux S, the direct drive interactive smart trainer from Tax. Very similar to what Apple do with their products. They take something that's existing, make a few refinements and put an S on the end of the name. Tax have taken the Flux, made a few refinements and put an S on the end of the name. Literally, that's exactly what they've done. The product code itself also has an S on the end of the name there. The T2900 becomes the T2900S for the S version of the Flux. The technical specifications for the Flux S looks very similar to the Flux. If I interleave them here, 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 they look very similar with a few small refinements here and there. Tax have also released the Flux 2, which is not the Flux S. The Flux S is the original Flux. It gets a bit confusing. It's a little bit like how Apple released the iPhone 10 and the iPhone 8. But in a nutshell, the Flux S is the newer refined model of the Flux. Just think about it as a Flux 1.1 and the Flux 2 is the next generation of the Flux. We'll get to the Flux 2 another day. But for now, all you need to know about the Tax Flux S in 60 seconds, starting now. The Tax Flux S is a direct drive interactive smart trainer. So it's rear wheel comes off, bike goes on the unit, and away you'll go. You'll get things like erg mode for training, sim mode to simulate the hills, and all it comes with. The bike compatibility is standard quick release, 130 and 135 out of the box. Through axle compatibility is with an additional adapter that you will need to purchase if required. Shimano and SRAM compatible free hub, does not come with a cassette, you'll need to supply one of those as well. Wireless protocols, Amp plus FEC, Bluetooth with FTMS coming soon. The data transmitted from the Flux S is speed, cadence, power, and interactive trainer. So if you're on Apple TV, that all goes through the one Bluetooth channel. Happy days there with the restrictions there from Apple. Power accuracy claims plus or minus 3%. Calibration is done via a spin down. Grade simulation up to 10%. Max wattage 1500 watts. Flywheel, seven kilos or 15.4 pounds. It really depends on the gearing and how things are set up internally. So flywheel isn't really indicative of what it feels like to ride. Noise level claimed minimal. Yeah, okay, I'll give them that, minimal noise. And the Flux S tips the scales in overall at 24 kilos or around 54 pounds. So it's definitely no light weight in the playing field there. So I guess the next question is, what are the key differences between the Flux S and the Flux? Well, here's my list right here. Well, first of all, the Flux S replaces the Flux, so you won't see many Fluxes around anymore. You'll be buying the Flux S if that's what you're aiming for. The Flux itself received a number of refinements early on for a number of reasons, so you'll get all of that new technology or the new refinements already in the Flux S from the start. Long cage rear derailleur support, so if you're running a gravel bike or running a one by chainring on the front, newer bikes have longer cage derailleurs. Away you go, you can see the gap right here. Lots more room there for your long cage derailleurs. And internal modifications to improve the ride, feel, and power measurement. That line is from tax. I can't actually verify that one because we don't quite know exactly what they're talking about. I guess we'll find out once we unbox it. Speaking of, let's get into it. First up, let's weigh the original box here. We have the original Flux itself weighing at 23.6 kilos and the Flux S box weighing in at 24.7 kilos. So just over a kilo heavier on the box. Okay, standard packaging there. It looks nice and tight in the box. Feet come out, the unit itself. The box itself puts a little bit of styrofoam everywhere. So out with the vacuum cleaner to make the Llama Lab look nice and tidy. Okay, we have the feet, the main unit itself of the Flux S. We have the manuals, we have the quick release skewers, the hardware to build, the power cable, and a 30 day trial of the tax desktop software. Okay, out with all the parts here, off with the knife and on with the feet. Build process isn't too bad for this, probably two or three minutes max. Clamping those down and tidying things up again, out with a vacuum cleaner, again. There's a bit of a theme here of keeping things nice and tidy. Okay, one of my favorite parts of a new trainer, the cassette going on just like Magic. So Roddy rear skewer in for my road bike. Power on, lights come alive, everything looks good. Next up is checking for the latest firmware. You can see here, I'm making a Bluetooth connection from the iPhone to the Flux S. And as soon as the connection is made, there we go, the light goes blue. Checking for the updates, and it appears we're on the current version. Happy days. 
Time to get the bike on and get everything configured for the first ride. Okay, into Zwift for the pairing screen. First up, it shows us FEC, and then it flips over to showing Tax FEC. And here we go, Tax FEC. So we have it connected as the controllable trainer, power source, and cadence. We hit OK, and away we go. Easy as that. Okay, so I've just stepped off the Flux S after my first ride. And I thought I'd just have a bit of a chat about my initial impressions before we even look at the data itself. Well, first of all, it didn't break. So there's a plus. Uh, no problems whatsoever with the ride of the unit. No spinning out in sprints. Uh, my erg mode tests, once it breaks from erg mode, from the uh, steady state tests into my sprint test, it goes into sim mode. So it didn't spin out like we've seen with other trainers. So double points there for that. The ride feel of the Flux S, very, very similar to me as the Flux 1, the original Flux unit. I'd characterize the ride feel as a bit sticky. So it's kind of hard to explain. Just riding along, just riding along, you've got to really select the gear to get the spin up and to get on top of the gear. When it hits into a gradient, you'll feel it, it'll kick back. But then when you're going downhill, it doesn't really let go and you don't really spin out. You've got to grab a few easier gears to really replicate that spinning downhill. So it just feels a little sticky through the pedal stroke. It's probably something to do with the belt and the gearing and the flywheel. Look, this is a mid-range trainer, so I don't expect it to act exactly like one of the higher end trainers, Neo, Hammer, H2, Kicker, Drivo, etc. This is a mid-range trainer, so you've got to do a little bit more work, I guess you'd call it. Noise-wise, very similar to that of the Flux 1. I'd call it almost identical to the Flux 1. Has a bit of a lower noise hum to it. Definitely not anything high-pitched, and even at higher revs, it's really not that obnoxious. Most of the noise you'll be hearing comes from your drivetrain. There's a few things to discuss with erg mode in regards to what I saw here with the Flux S. Now, it does require a slower flywheel speed, so there are some power zones that the flywheel needs to work within to hold those watts. You can ride through the prescribed wattage if you're in a massive gear and get that flywheel spun right up. So very much like the Doretto, do your erg mode workouts in the 39 or the small ring on the front if you need some higher power zones. I'll discuss that a little bit more once we have a look at the data. So there's a few thoughts and observations after stepping off the Flux S for my first ride and stress test of the unit. Now it's time to download all this data and we'll have a look. We'll deep dive into what we see. As always, now it's over to DC Runmaker's analysis tool where we can compare multiple power meters with an overlay to see how things really line up. Well, what we see here, pretty good numbers up against the Vector 3s. So standard riding along, my test for the Flux S was to ride Watopia Hilly first. I'm very familiar with Watopia Hilly. Taking it up the first Watopia wall, through the S's, just to gauge the reaction speed of the resistance kicking in. All was fine there, not a problem at all. So there's my first 20 minutes or so there, stopped and then the calibration process. Now the flux calibration process, typically that has been done in the past with the tax utility app. Today I run into a little bit of a hurdle. I may be a little bit too early with the flux S, but I'll just run you through the process that I went through. So we've unpaired the trainer from Zwift as a controllable trainer. I've loaded up the tax utility app as I have in the past with the flux, selected the unit and it just simply said begin cycling after I hit calibration. Now. I began cycling probably 20, maybe 30 years ago. So I'm not sure what we're getting at here about begin cycling, maybe begin pedaling, begin starting off, begin something. But if I had a started to pedal and kept pedaling, I'd still be there about five hours later because it didn't do anything. It failed to register the actual trainer moving along. The dashboard worked in the utility app, the calibration failed. So next option, we close the utility app, we open up the tax training app and uh, things went south from there as well. Um, it just told me instruction on how to calibrate goes here. I think I'm a little early. I'm gonna to have to put a support ticket in for that. So I had to give up on the calibration side of things, which was a bit disappointing because if the numbers didn't line up and it was a calibration issue with the trainer. Anyhow, watch this space. I'll update everybody when the calibration feature is fixed. But for me, for my Llama Lab test, I had to take whatever was out of the box and uh, go from there. 
With the calibration issues aside, I'm just gonna roll with it, so to speak. So into the 200 watt and 250 watt steady state test and into the sprint there, the data itself looks pretty good. At 200 watts, beautiful. One for one with the Vector 3 pedals, all's looking pretty good. Into the 250 zone, something interesting happened. Have a look here on the Zwift screen. Here's the 200 watt zone, nice and smooth. The trainer itself, you can see the number there in black, bouncing around one or two watts here and there, maybe three or four watts here and there. It's all looking pretty good. Switching over to the 250 watt zone though, there's a lot of bouncing happening. Within Zwift, there's no three second smoothing in erg mode. So you will get the raw number reported by the trainer. So it's sort of jumping up and down quite a lot. The three second average shown on the Garmin head unit that I was clicking the data with was fine though. So the overall was good, but the smoothing in 250 watt erg mode was really pretty much all over the place. It would be very hard to look at that, but with your eye, and make sure you're hitting that 250 watt zone because it was saying 260, 230, 240, 263, 230, 240, 263. So the average was spot on 250, but it was just sore toothing all the way along. Really interesting stuff. That aside, the numbers were looking pretty good. There's a slight drop out there that I'll ignore for now, but I'll keep a close eye on that one. So the flux did drop out a little bit. A lot of stuff happening in the Llama Lab. So look, I'll cut that a little bit of slack there for now. And that was the only drop out that I saw all day. Jumping into the sprint, um, all looking pretty good there. The pedals reported about 50 watts or so, a little higher in the sprint, given where they measure power. Pedals are right there on your feet. The Flux S is all the way down the back through a number of systems. That's not too bad at all, happy days. Into the overs and unders. Hmm, rabbit hole begins. Reading a little high in the overs and unders, but look, this could be down to calibration. I couldn't calibrate the trainer. At 200 watts, it was fine. Slight separation at 250 with a bit of sawtoothing there and the sawtooth thing kicks in again here at the 450. If you look here at the second 450, it sort of jumps up and down a little bit, whereas the 350 zones are nice and smooth. Hmm, really interesting. You can see that here on screen as well. It's uh, nice and smooth through this area here, except when we jump up to the 450 zone, it starts sawtoothing. So I think erg mode there might need a little bit of smoothing in the algorithm for the power output. Now, with that data separation, this is again, I told you we're down the rabbit hole. With the data separation there in the overs and unders, and I'm using the vector threes. If anyone's clicked on my vector threes, what was happening with those, I thought I'd better rule that out. What was happening with the vector threes after a really hard sprint, the calibration of those or the offset just skewed a little bit. It was a betting in period. I thought I've got to rule this out to make sure I didn't do a hard sprint, set the vectors off a little bit and have to reset them or re-offset them. So I stopped performed an offset on the pedals themselves and performed the same over and unders and same deal, which to me indicates there's a calibration issue here. Um, so there are about, what are we looking at here? Uh, 22 watts over in the 350 watt zone and probably about the same ish in the 450 watt zone. So again, only one data point, only one data source. The Vector 3s have been pretty good though as we saw up against the Neo the other day. Um, hmm, interesting though. And then breaking out of erg mode, back into sim mode, just for some riding along and just response changes for the gradient feel and things of the trainers so I could get my head around how the trainer responds and another quick sprint there as well, just to make sure the unit didn't spin out on flat ground. Happy days there, it was all good. And one final test that I did on the Flux S was to try and outride the prescribed wattage in erg mode. Now, a few of these mid-range trainers, the Flux, the Dorito, if you were to use a massive gear on the front, 53, and a smaller gear on the back and really spin that flywheel up. It doesn't have the ability to grab those watts and really lock you down into erg mode. You can outride effectively the prescribed wattage. So you can see here, I'm in a prescribed wattage zone of 200 watts, but I can easily outride that by using a bigger gear and just pushing more watts. So the hot tip there for the mid-range trainers, such as the Flux S, is to put it in the small ring on the front, as mentioned before, and then it's happy days. Jumping here to the cadence reported by the Flux S for my pedal stroke, and it's happy days for me. It was within one RPM of the Vector 3s, so that's all good. Your mileage may vary depending on how smooth your pedal stroke is, but for me, it's all good. Over to the pricing of the Flux S, you're looking at 749 US, 599 euros, 
549 pounds and just under a thousand Aussie dollars. Remember, you will need to factor in a cassette if you don't have one of those and a through axle adapter if you require one of those as well. Look, that price point puts this unit in a pretty competitive position up against other mid-range trainers, but remember, there's still a few gotchas with these units. I'll put a hold or a to be advised on the power accuracy side of things. As soon as I can get the calibration working, I will need to revisit the Llama lab test, but things like the erg mode requiring the smaller ring to make sure that flywheel slowed down. They're definitely not a problem on higher end trainers. You can put it almost in any year and try and soldier on. Those units have the power to really lock you down and lock those watts. So there's a few gotchas with the mid-range trainers. Other than that though, they're a pretty good deal. And no discussion on a Tax Flux Smart Trainer would be complete without acknowledging the problems they've had with this unit in the past. I've personally documented all mine. You'll see them here on the channel. The third unit that I've had has been no problems. It's been fine, happy days. I've tried to break it just as I have tried to break this one. If it went up in flames, it would make brilliant YouTube, but it hasn't. So this one's stuck together pretty well. As always though, if you're gonna be purchasing one of these units, which is a budget smart trainer, purchase locally, purchase from someone who's got your back, or make sure the company you're buying from online will do returns. That's the best advice I can offer there. So there we are, the Tax Flux S Interactive Smart Trainer. It's been a pretty good ride so far. Stay tuned on this one. Thanks for watching.